Hey, we're continuing on with chapter 2. This video is going to be about solving quadratic equations by graphing, and more importantly, factored form. So it, it turns out solving by graphing is not actually a very good method or choice, and so we'll see how that connects to factored form and how factored form is typically a far better choice. But first, a few vocab words. Double root. So when you're graphing a quadratic, there's a couple different things can happen, but sometimes the two solutions for the quadratic come out to be the same number. If that's the case, you get a double root. So typically you'll get either two answers, or one answer, or zero answers. If you get only one answer out, the same answer twice, it's called a double root. Second thing is complex numbers. So when you're solving a quadratic, typically you have to take the square root of both sides. But sometimes that makes you take the square root of a negative number. So if you take the square root of a negative number, uh, you learned up until this point in your life that you cannot do that, and the answer would be no solution. Um, it turns out that some math has been invented which allows you to take the square root of a negative, and these are called complex numbers, or also called imaginary numbers. So in this class, we're not going to really deal with imaginary numbers, but you should be aware of what it means. So if, if at any point you take the square root of a negative, uh, it means that the parabola does not cross the x-axis. So for example, if you have a graph that looks like this, and your parabola is right here, and the directions say, find the x-intercepts or roots. Well, clearly this parabola does not cross this axis. So when you mathematically solve it, you will get out an imaginary or complex answer. So there's no real answer, but there are some imaginary mathematical answers. And I know that sounds very strange, uh, and it is. Um, but inventing complex numbers allows you to do some cool tricks with math, but we're not going to worry about them this year. Okay, next vocab word, factored form. So we already learned standard form. If you want to recall, uh, standard form, what was that? Standard form was y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So this is an alternate way to write parabolas. Quadratic form can be written in standard or in factored, and then there's a third one we'll learn later. So factored form is function y equals a is the number in the front leading coefficient same a value that it used to be. So this a is exactly the same as this a. Uh, but here we've taken the trinomial quadratic, and after factoring, which we did extensively in chapter 8, after factoring you get two sets of parentheses, and you'll have x uh, with the number here, and x with the number here. Now the reason we use a minus sign in the formula will become clear a little bit later, but just trust me that their formula has a minus sign. And then there's some number here, and there's some number here. And so this is called factored form. This piece here is one of the factors, and this piece here is one of the factors. And if you wanted to find the x-intercept, you could set this equal to 0, because the output or y value is equal to 0 for an x-intercept. And then you could use the zero product property and solve these. And so now you can see why there's a minus sign. When you solve this, you have to add r1 to the other side. So r1 itself is called a root, or a zero, or an x-intercept. So r1 and r2 are the actual roots, or zeros, or y-intercepts. Uh, if this were a plus sign, then when you subtract to the other side, the answer would come out negative, which we don't want. So we want r1 and r2, just by convenience, to be the actual roots, which means the function or equation has to have a minus sign here and here. Uh, when you actually do a real problem, you could, of course, say you get like x plus 2 and x minus 3. So all this really means is the root is the opposite sign of whatever you see. So in this piece here, the root is actually just positive 3, because when you add 3 to both sides, you just get positive 3. Here, the root is negative 2, opposite of whatever you see. So the minus sign means opposite of whatever is the number there. All right, next slide. Problem solving tips. Uh, well, solving a quadratic by graphing basically means you're finding the x-intercepts of the graph, and here's why. This right here is a quadratic function in standard form, and if it's set equal to zero, what you can consider it as, pretend it was an equation, y equals ax squared plus bx plus c, and then consider that I plug in a y as zero. Okay, If I put a zero right here, now all of a sudden, I'm solving for the x-intercepts because the y, y value or output is zero when you're on the x-axis. So if you have a problem that looks like this, you can pretend that it started as an equation and that you plugged in y equals zero. And so when you're solving this equation, you're essentially finding, not essentially, you are finding 
the x-intercepts of the corresponding graph. Now, in order to do this, of course you have to have the equation in standard form, and you have to have it set equal to zero. If you have some numbers on both sides of the equation, you're definitely not yet ready to uh, find the factors and find the zeros. So graphically, you can see that there's three possibilities, same thing we talked about in the previous uh, lecture. The parabola could have a vertex um, in the bottom and open upward, which means you'll have two solutions. It could have a vertex up here opening upward, in which case you'll have no solutions. Or it could just be perfectly balanced right on the axis, in which case you'll have that double root vocab word. So there's only one answer, but it occurs twice mathematically. And of course, all three of these problems could be upside down. So here you might have one upside down like this that has no solutions, or upside down like this that has two solutions, or upside down like this that has exactly one solution. Right, so it doesn't matter whether they open up or down, it just matters how many times they cross the axis. But again, when you're solving these quadratics, you're essentially finding where they cross the x-axis. Um, now, this part here, I just put it as a reminder, but it turns out this is actually kind of the key part of this lesson. Another way to solve the quadratics and find the zeros, instead of graphing it and looking where they cross, is to factor the quadratic polynomial and then use the zero product property. So it turns out that in chapter 8, you were doing a lot more than you even realized. When you were learning how to factor and using the zero product property, in your mind you were just solving an equation, but in reality, let me go back a slide, in reality you were finding the x-intercepts for parabolic graphs, which is pretty cool. So it's actually much easier to factor and use the zero product property than it is to graph, and so we'll do a couple examples to show you that first example, x squared minus 2x plus 3. I want to use Desmos to do the actual graphing. So we've got x squared minus 2x plus 3. Okay, so we're going to be simultaneously looking at both of these here. First equation, I'm going to put in y equals x squared. See how as soon as I typed x squared, it gave me that basic parabola centered at 0, 0, over 1, up 1, over 2, up 4, etc. Let's keep typing here minus 2x. Notice how that distorted it and moved it, and now plus 3, and that distorted it and moved it as well. Okay, so now if we look at this parabola, just by looking at it, you can clearly see, if we were solving by graphing, that there are no intercepts. It does not cross anywhere along this x-axis, okay? So when we're trying to solve this, if we solve by graphing, we just look at it and say, ha, no solution. Okay, so the answer to the first one is no solution. Now let's look at it in terms of factoring. Okay, If we're back over here and we look at this and we try to factor it, if we try to draw two sets of parentheses and we look for two numbers that multiply to positive 3 but add up to negative 2, we can't think of any numbers that do that. And so that we would call this prime and, and we wouldn't be able to get an answer. Let's look at number 2. Okay, I'll take this one off. So for number 2 we've got, I'm going to change the c to an x c squared, or x squared, uh, plus 6x, and then plus 8. Okay, so let me click and drag this guy. Notice how that's a parabola. And now this one, it's definitely crossing the x-axis. Let me zoom in a little bit. Zoom in some more. And you can clearly see it's crossing right here at negative 2, and it's crossing right here at negative 4. So the two solutions number to number 2. In fact, let me make this clear. In your notes, you should be copying down this example, making a sketch of the graph, and then writing down what the answer is. So I'm not writing on the slides because I can't do that when I'm not in presentation mode, but you should be copying down this example, write the equation, draw the graph that was there, and then write down, for this one it was no solution because it didn't cross. For this one there are two solutions, and they are negative uh, 2 and negative 4. And so for, for this equation, if we were trying to factor it, in fact, let me do that, um, I'll go here, and then I'll go to the presentation mode. So this one was prime, and when we graph it, it had no solution. Okay, this one here, when we graphed it, it gave us a parabola, right? I'm just being messy here. And so we had an answer here, and we had an answer here. So instead of getting those from the graph, we're going to get them from the equation. So right, we can factor this expression. Two numbers that multiply to 8 and add up to 6 are definitely 2 and 4. Okay, but notice this is c plus 2 and c plus 4. 
if we use the zero product property, c plus 2 equals 0, subtract 2 from both sides and we get c equals negative 2. So this, this is now in factored form, and the equation, right, was x minus r1 and x minus r2, and so you can see r1 right here is negative 2, because x minus a negative 2 is x plus 2. Again, they have a c and we have an x, but that's just, that's just whatever variable you're using. And so this one, you can immediately jump to the answer, c equals negative 4. Oops, c equals negative 4. So these are the two answers, which are roots of the quadratic. So you could get them from Desmos by looking at the graph and seeing where they cross. But far simpler, in my opinion, is if they're possible and easy to get with whole numbers, then this piece here will be factorable. Okay, let's look at one that's uh, not solved yet. So let's look at number three. Okay, here we don't have it set equal to zero, so we're not yet ready. We need to add one to both sides. And so now we have a squared minus 2a plus 1 equals zero. Once we have it equal to zero, it's a quadratic. Now we can factor it. Two numbers that multiply to one and add to negative two should be a minus one and a minus 1. And you can recognize this as a perfect square because the middle is twice the first times the last, or the square root, root of first and square root of last. Basically, it has the form a squared plus 2ab plus b squared. Right. This is the form for all perfect square trinomials. And so this one gives us a root a equals 1, and this one gives us a root a equals 1. So remember what we call that. When you get the same answer twice, this is called a double root. And now if I go over to Desmos and I try to graph this one, I can go x squared minus 2x plus 1. So I'm graphing that. And then let me zoom out and find it. And here it is, parabola here. And you can see that the parabola crosses the x-axis just one time right here at x equals 1. So that's why we got a double root. All right. So there's three possibilities. You can get no solution, you can get two solutions, or you can get one solution that's called a double root. And it all just depends on the parabola. You're welcome to use Desmos to graph these um, problems. Um, but really what I want you to do is practice solving them by factoring. So this is a key. In the directions, most of the directions will say solve by graphing. However, I want you to replace that with the directions solve by factoring, and then maybe use Desmos, or if you have a graphing calculator or an application on your cell phone to do graphing, then you can use that to check. But I do not want you to actually make t-tables, because if you were to solve these by graphing, what the book actually wants you to do is to find the vertex using the shortcut, and then make a big t-table and plot a bunch of points, and then use those points and t-table to find the zeros. And I think that's silly, and I think that graphing is a far better solution. So please go ahead and do it that way, and we'll be in good shape. All right, see you in class.